good evening and welcome to a very special service. A service that we look forward to each year. Haven't been able to do it for two years, but I'm thankful that we're able to do it tonight where we can tell what God did at camp. And uh, because you made an investment in these kids to be able, for them to be able to go. And so now we want to be able to give a report on what it is that you were, uh, what your investment went towards and how God works. So if you will, please stand and grab your hymn books and turn to hymn number 84. Hymn number 84, we're just going to do the first and the last verses of this uh, great hymn, Mansion Over the Hilltop, hymn number 84, just the first and the last. I'm satisfied. start to the service. Let's have a word of prayer and then we will have another song. So please remain standing after we pray. Brother Gary, would you pray for us, please? Yes, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the opportunity to be in your house tonight. Father, we do uh, thank you for the camps this year that they were able to go first of all, Father, that, uh, yes. uh, that it was a good camp and that they had the uh, traveling mercies there in the back. And Father, we just thank you for all your own people. We pray for all your blessings and all. We're looking forward to hearing from them tonight. Amen. Turn to hymn number 55 now. We've got a couple songs tonight, so hymn number 55. We'll again just do the first and the last verses of this one. When we all get to heaven, number 55. Sing and 
forward to that? Well, amen. Well, hopefully we can give you a taste of it tonight with what God did at camp. Thank you. You may be seated. It is not my custom to be a part of this service. I like to sit out there and listen to it. And, uh, but tonight there's a couple of things I need to do. Uh, we have a fish fry coming up next Saturday. Uh, start cooking about 1030, eating around 12. Uh, I've got the guys, or I say I got them. They know what to do. They're already preparing for it. They're going after the seasonings and the, all that stuff uh, shortly, tomorrow, the next day, whenever it is, in the rainstorm, you know. Uh, but we have this slight, slight, minute problem. One of our gentlemen, by the name of Doyle Patterson, graduated to heaven this year. And he is missed in my life and in our church. But we've always used his fish fryer in order to do this. And he's gone. And uh, so we know where to get the fish fryer. Not from him, but we know where to buy one. And uh, I talked to the guys that are going to put this thing together and get all the stuff, David and Gary. And we said, well, uh, we'll just go buy it. And if the church don't want it, then we'll buy it ourselves. And I thought, how are we three going to split a fish fryer? <laughs> Amen. So, yeah, I know. Well, I guess we're all going to David's and he's cooking every night. Amen. And we're cooking. But uh, we can get one of these fish fryers. And honestly, I don't know how much. I have looked at them, but I don't remember. Uh, at uh, Bucky's Truck Stop, they sell exactly the same fish fryer. I know. I know. So uh, I want to buy a fish fryer. I already got a motion. <laughs> I got a second. In favor, raise your hand. We're buying a fish fryer. And then after we're done, huh? <laughs> after we're through with it, we'll clean it good and then we'll store it and then we'll have it whenever we want it, whether we use it in the fall for anniversary day or on our annual, uh, uh, annual fish fry. So, uh, Brother Gary, if y'all go get that stuff, if you want to go buy Bucky's and buy one of those, go right ahead on. You, you have permission. Amen. And I'll just keep that out at my house. You have it. Oh, wait, I've got one more thing. When we get to testimonies, I've got a lot of our teenagers are going to give testimonies. Some of our ladies are going to give a synopsis of what the messages were. And then under testimonies, I have... Miss Darla, Miss Kate, Miss Sharon, Miss Callie. Now I don't know about Callie. I do know about the rest of them. <laughs> Callie has four pages of notes. <laughs> Only to keep it short. Two minutes. Two minutes. Three? Zach said three? If he says two, go with two. Three, and now he's not speaking, so we split her three minutes. No, no. <laughs> three minutes, and you're on the clock. No. Three You said two minutes, so I, I say two minutes sounds great. You know, we just, we just witnessed something I never thought I would see in any Baptist church. Never thought for a million years. We just voted on food. I thought food was just kind of a done deal. <laughs> That's why I gained 50 pounds right after I moved here. All right, let's grab our handbooks, turn to 204. Please stand with me again to the first and the last verses. That's what this uh, service is all about, to God be the glory. And so we're going to do the first and last verses of 204, to God be the glory. To God be the glory.
how about this? We've got two preachers that are doing the offering for us. I want to say thank you to both of these men for taking care of the services while we're gone. Brother Owen, would you pray for the offering, please? Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we just ask that you bless your word, God, and be with the youth, Lord, as they share their time that they have at camp, Father, and to the Lord and thank the Lord from their hearts. We just ask that you bless this offering. giving a testimony, please go ahead and come on up to the choir line. a wonderful blessed week <laughs> my goodness you know I had revival just going up to camp Amen. once preacher got in the van and started driving I was praying the whole way there Amen. he didn't hear me <laughs> either way uh, do thank you for your prayers uh, again we had a little bit of trouble getting up to camp but you know what preacher and I had a good time once we got everybody out of the way we didn't have to watch a single kid on the way up and we thought this is great we opened the windows and it was awesome so we had a good time and then of course uh, real smooth on the way back even and didn't have any issues so praise the Lord for that safety is something we should never take for granted uh, the camps um, camp director this year actually had made mention of that about how over the all the years that he had been the camp director which I believe is 29 years there has never been a serious accident at all with any church going or leaving the campground ever so praise the Lord that we didn't add to that this year or that we didn't change that this year so praise the Lord for that well uh, again thank you again very much for your investment in the young people uh, this is the church of today not just the church of tomorrow and it was awesome seeing God get a hold of me. Promised I wouldn't do that. Ah, I'd been fighting it all day. But it, it, it really was a special time. Well, first thing that we're going to do is we have a couple that are going to give just a summary of some of the speakers. Um, oh, we are going to do a song first. That's why they're in charge. Okay, no, they're not. All right, we're going to actually, we have a camp song that we, kind of a chorus that we learn each year, kind of the theme song for the week. So we are going to sing that just so that way you can hear something that they learned. And then we'll get into the testimonies right afterwards. The God of all creation, of power and majesty, He left His throne in glory for the cross of Calvary. May we never lose the wonder that He Well, that was camp for you right there. If you want to know how it went, that was how it went. God just showed up. Amen. You know, we can take that for granted. But whenever we go up to a mountain where I've heard it said if the trees could speak, the things that they would say at the camp is the 75th anniversary of the camp this year. The thousands of kids tens of thousands I would say that have gotten saved over the years 
surrender to preach. If any of you know who Sam Davison is, he was the one, he surrendered to preach up there at camp. In that very campground. As a matter of fact, I can show you the spot where he surrendered his life. We had some kids do that this week. Maybe one of them Amen. will be the next brother Sam. Well, let's hear what God did. So Aiden, I believe you're going to start us off and just uh, give again the summary of the first speaker, which was, are you, he's going to do Brother Stephen. It's all right. Uh, Brother Stephen's messages over the week was about questions and apologetics. He told us not to be afraid to ask questions about the preachings or the devotions we do. And during the devotions this week, we didn't do it as much because uh, we had basically four messages we had to hear, and we just had to wonder uh, if we had any questions, Brother Zach and, and Scott would answer them for us. Amen. Hey, good job. Hey, honestly, I know that sounds simple, but that's exactly what Stephen did. It was simply called questions. Because guess what? We have questions in life. God's Word has the answers. And so, what we did in the evenings for devotions was a little bit different. Scott and I just said, if you have any questions, talk to us. Let's talk about it. And man, was it awesome. These kids got it. They didn't just hear it, they got it. So it was exciting. And so I told Brother Stephen about that. He was all excited to hear that, to how the kids got a hold of it. And Brother Stephen just did a phenomenal job. It was marvelous. So talking about how we have reasons for our faith, we should know them. We should not be afraid to ask the questions that help us get that knowledge. So good job, Aiden. And Miss Darla is going to do our missionary speaker this year was Brother Micah Dor to Mexico. So a couple of things that stuck out uh, about missionary um, my uh, brother door is his humbleness. Um, extremely humble man of God, a broken man of God, a compassionate man of God. You could tell that he really loves God and he loves people. Um, there was... <laughs> I was told that I couldn't tell y'all everything he said, so just some highlights. Um, some of the questions that he challenged the kids with, one of them was, what is it that you love? What is it that you love? Um, and has the blessings that God has given you taken the place of God? Um, that one really made me start to think, has the blessings that God given me, has, have I allowed those blessings to take the place of God himself in my life? God wants to use you, but before God can use you, he has to know that he is first in your life. And the, the one that went behind that was Abraham, when, when God told Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac, which at that point was everything to Abraham. He had been waiting for 99 years for this boy, you know, and so, but God wants to make sure that he's first in your life. Um, one of the messages that pastor that pastor door had presented was the dangers of a second generation christian this one really hit home for me because i am a first generation christian and my children are second generation christians and he took the text from luke 15 on the prodigal son and i'm just going to give you some highlights because this one was was very important to me he said the the second one of the dangers of a second generation christian is ungratefulness um, he wanted, the son wanted what he did not labor for when he told his dad, give me my inheritance. Well, he didn't labor for that. So he was ungrateful. Hypocrisy. You know, he was really good at presenting to people what, what he wanted them to see in him. So he was a hypocrite. Um, curiosity. He was pondering that far off country and you know, he, the, the, the sins that his friends made look good. He was curious. Are they really that good? Because he lived in a godly home. They didn't do those things in his home. And then lack of character. The money that the father gave him was more than he could handle. But yet the father only gave him half. The father had twice as much as the son, but the father didn't have a problem handling that money. There was a lack of character in the son and it was too much. Why? Because the son did not have to labor for a penny of that money. So he didn't appreciate it. And then improper comparison, the son compared him, 
when they compare themselves to other people, they need to be comparing ourselves to Jesus and not others. But what really hit home on this was when he said, you know, you as first generation Christians, you came from that life of sin. You know what's there. And the danger is, is a lot of times our kids, because we raise them in godly homes, going to church, they don't understand the sins that the Lord deliver us out of and everything that we try to protect them from. And so that's a danger of a second generation Christian. The father made no compromise with sin. The father knew where the son was, but did not go to save him from the consequences of his choices. The father understood that he could not help the son until there was repentance. Of course, if we go on to read, the young man got his heart right with the Lord. And in verse 12, the father says, or the, the son says, Father, give me. But in verse 19, he says, Father, make me thy servant. That's repentance. That's that true heart change. And then he also left the kids on Friday with a challenge. Or um, No, it was Thursday. The most important thing as a Christian, which is verse uh, Psalms 24, 7, that I will dwell in the house of the Lord. You don't need X, Y, and Z from the world. You need God's presence. I had more, but I have to go, y'all. The main speaker was Pastor Park Sutton. He's a pastor in Fort Collins, Colorado, and just a marvelous, marvelous man of God. And uh, he is a character. We'll say it that way. He was a character. But you want to talk about a weeping preacher. My goodness. He, he, he would tear up a couple times a message. And his heart was just on display for the kids this week. And they really grabbed on to it. And God worked this week. I, how, do you remember how many they said got saved? I believe it was close to 15. 15 or even maybe close to 20 this week. And many, many surrendered their lives to the Lord. Many other decisions made. It was just marvelous. And so, yeah. Yeah, and it was a smaller camp. And yet God still really showed up. <clears throat> so, Keegan is going to come and give a summary of Brother Park's message. Well, I won't try to take up a lot of your time, but Brother Park in his morning services preached on Samson's life. And he, uh, the main theme he had was wasting potential. Samson met a woman at Timnath, which was the city of the Philistines. One of the first messages he preached was this. He went to the wrong place, a city of the Philistines. He hung out with the wrong people, the woman at Timnath. And because of that, he had the wrong passions. And it all depends on where you go and who you hang out with that can change the course of your life. Samson, uh, his sin killed him in chapter 14, which is whenever this took place. He died in chapter 16, which shows that your sin may not hurt you now, but it will later. Samson, Samson took the gates of Gaza, funny enough, the Bible says bar and all, carried them about 30 miles to a hill, at Ga or a hill at Hebron. Samson had action, but never restraint. He had sin in his heart, but he never had repentance. And he had accomplishment, but never a relationship with God. I learned of that, that through that message and through the rest of his preaching, Wasting Potential, that not doing something is just as bad as partaking in sin. And I need to live for God more. And on his nightly services, he preached on Luke 23, surrounding Christ's death. His first message was, Our Little World. Talking about King Herod, or, uh, Herod, as Jesus was brought before him, Herod wanted to have a relationship with Christ, but on his terms. Herod's wife was convicted by Christ, but turned him away. What I got from that was uh, everyone was thinking about themselves, but Jesus was thinking about them. And whenever I'm convicted by Christ, I need to listen to it. And what really hit me was his uh, his Thursday night message. I was with him all night that night. It was crazy how God works. It was almost as if I knew he was going to say before he said it, because it was something that I need to deal, I need to deal with. Accurate but meaningless, talking about the sign that hung above Jesus' head on the cross. Jesus of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. The sign was accurate, but it doesn't matter what the sign says, it's what was crucified behind the sign. What hit me was, I can be called a pastor or a Christian, but what do I produce? If I claim to love Christ, then I should tell others about him. How good am I at telling others about my faith? 
am I a Christian or did I just get my ticket punched to heaven? I learned that week that if I claim to be a Christian, then I should act like a little Christ because that's what the word means. I want to thank you all for taking or for paying to take us up to camp, putting that initiative forth because even though you may not have been able to go, I love to I love that I can share this with you so that you can see the product of y'all's work. Amen. All right, so that is a summary of the messages. But really, it's not just the messages that matter, it's what happens as a result of the messages. So at this time, we're going to have quite a few testimonies. I'm not going to come up and introduce each one. They have a list, so if you all, all will, just whenever it's your turn on the list, just come right on up, okay? And I believe our first one is Miss Lexi. Amen. Lexi. <laughs> Amen. Come on, girl. So at camp, they had a lot of good messages, but um, and like a lot of them gave me a lot to think about. But one of the ones that stood out to me was one where we were told that when we were praying, we should ask what God wants. And that made me realize that a lot of time when I pray, I say I want, and I don't ask him what he wants. So from now on, I'm going to be trying to ask what he wants when I'm like trying to make decisions in my life. Amen. Uh, hello. Okay. All right. <laughs> At uh, church camp, there was a lot of good messages, but um, the ones that got me the most were Brother Park's messages, right, Brother Park's? Yeah. But the main one that hit me was the one when he was talking about not doing something that is right, that Keegan talked about earlier. That one hit me because my family's very iffy about going to church. They're not iffy, but they don't they haven't gone much. I haven't seen them go. And he was talking about how we had to save our generation and um like it kinda hit me because like I'm the really the only one that goes to church besides Aiden because I don't see the others go to church, so that one just hit me. So uh, I think God was telling me to just like start spreading the word to my family and my friends at school. So yeah, thank you. Uh, morning. So um, I missed the camp shirt memo, so I don't have mine on. But uh, I, Brother Park, like Ethan said, really hit me here because I was being a, I was saying I was a you, but I was acting like a them, and he didn't touch up on this when he did a summary. Basically, I was saying I was a Christian, but I was living in the world, living by world standards, and it was wrong of me, and I found the wrong places, and I was with the wrong people, and up on, up at church camp, I've decided that I was going to abandon that to remove that from my life, and I have since I've came back. I've removed those people, and it is lifting, uplifting, and I feel better, I feel whole, I feel my banner above me says Christian, and I want it to stand when I, people see me that they say that, they see a Christian, Amen. they look at a Christian, they believe I'm a Christian. Amen. And that is all I, all I want, and uh, I know that God has pushed me in the right direction, and I'm ready to see where he takes me from here. So. Amen. During this week of camp, I was the one who surrendered my life in the group, and I, I just wanted to see what happened. Cause before camp, I did not know like what to do with my life after I was saved. Cause I just basically went through the motions, and I didn't know what to do. So I hope seeing what what will, will happen from here, and just gonna go with it. Cause I don't know what to do after I had to, got saved and I didn't know what to do with my life and surrender my life and wondering what's God's plan for me coming up. Amen. So God really spoke to me about wasted potential and that we should not waste our life on 
worldly stuff and that we should spend our life in his word and I don't know how to say it, but and another thing God spoke to me about was that I need to act more like a Christian and not just say I am a Christian. So Amen. Amen. me again. So, um, I just truly want to thank each and every one of y'all. Yes, sir, preacher. No, no, put that down. That's negativity. I'm going to reject that. I want to thank each and every one of y'all that helped, um, that I know it's been two years since we had the dessert auction, but that is the main fundraiser that helps send these kids to camp that otherwise they would not get to go without your contributions. And I know that y'all really buy those desserts and then just pass them off. And it's really about these kids. But I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all of the money. And it just shows the love that this church has for these kids. Um, and so I do want to say thank you to y'all. That is a huge deal. So I took up most of my time doing that. But what I, would, what I would like to challenge is, I know that Brother Gary and Miss Brenda get, didn't get to go this year. That broke my heart because I know that they've been in the past and they, they can testify to this. I guarantee you those children did not come back the way they left here. Amen. And the most impactful thing is when you get to watch God change their hearts. And you can't put a price on that. You cannot put a price on that. So I want to thank you, Bible Baptist in Bridgeport, for loving God and loving these kids. And I encourage you, if you ever want to go and see some God work, go. Because they did not. It was over the week. You just started watching Monday. Tuesday, a little softer. Wednesday, brokenness. Thursday, rejoicing. Friday, praise God. And I got to give this testimony. I've got to. We came in back there. Miss Rhonda Reed, wherever she is. Oh, anyways. We were so happy and hugging and loving, and my son, Alex, needs to go to camp next year because he goes, what's wrong with you people? I said, Alex, we went to church, we went to camp, we got our right, hearts right with the Lord, and we just loving on each other. Well, not me. And I said, come here and give me a hug. He goes, get away from me, Mom. And so we had a hug fest with Alex. So just, I'm just saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. These kids did not come back the way they left. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so I only have four bullet points, preacher. <laughs> First, I want to say there's a, a slideshow down there. It's less than four minutes. Uh, it'll be on after service. Our projector's uh, down, but if you want to see some pictures, uh, you'll can, you can get a, a little glimpse into our week at camp. And now I'm going to give a testimony on behalf of one of our young ladies. Um, Oh, I'm going to cry. Just bear with me. Uh, so she got saved Monday night. And then in the, the message about the prodigal son, the Lord showed her how good she has it. And she was, she's been fighting with her mom and she was planning on moving out when she was 17, which will be in September, I think. And, um, the Lord just convicted her and said, you're safe right where you're at. You're, you're where you need to be. So she texted her mom and she said, mom, I'm sorry. I'm going to stay at home till I'm 18. And, um, I just, I just rejoice in that because that the Lord's the one that heals families. And, um, we had another young lady that said that, uh, brother, one of Brother Park's messages was about taking accountability for yourself, for your actions. No matter what has happened to you, um, we can play the blame game and say, well, because of this, I'm angry, or because of that, I am you know, don't like whatever. And um, he said, you just need to take responsibility. He said, because God can't do anything for you if it was someone else's fault. But if you take responsibility, God can do it all. And she said, I learned to, to take ownership. I learned to quit blaming. Y'all, that's huge. That's bondage. That's freedom from bondage. And my third point is uh, the campers were incredibly respectful. There was not an ounce of drama. There was no complaining. It was just incredible. Even with all of us having to get in one van and 
Uh, Y'all should have seen Keegan in the back seat of the van, I'm just saying. Um, In fact, I think there's a picture. Um, They were just awesome. It was, they were wonderful to uh, work with and we got to, Miss Darla and I got to adopt three other girls from a a different church. I didn't have a counselor and one of them got saved and one of them uh, got her heart right with the Lord and one of them decided she was going to be a testimony at school. It's just awesome. It was just awesome. And, uh, Miss Darla volunteered me to sing a solo for the girls' choir. Brother Mark was asking for a soprano, and uh, I didn't know he wanted an improvising soprano, so I gave it my best shot. The song we sang and the verse I sang was, I don't know about tomorrow. It may bring me poverty, but the one who feeds the sparrow is the one who stands by me. And the path that is my portion may be through the flame or flood, but his presence goes before me and I'm covered with his blood. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow and I know who holds my hand. And uh, the Lord just wanted me to dwell on that. And I'm so thankful. And so thank you, church. Sure love you. Amen. Not fair to have to follow Miss Kate. First of all, the trip up was great. I had a chauffeur that didn't didn't talk back to me. (laughs) And he was excellent. He I was in such great I was so impressed with his humility and with his respect and with his confidence. <laughs> but it was, it really was awesome. Preacher had so much wisdom, I can't even begin Amen. to tell you. And he said, I'm going to go up there with Zach, we're going to put the boys on the girls' van, and Scott's going to come and drive you and Daphne and Christy. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> there wasn't anything normal about this whole camp. And so, anyway, the Lord was so gracious and so good. Second of all, I'd like to apologize because we did not let y'all know we made it to camp. So we were listening to Brother Ken's message, and we were like, oh, oh, we didn't let anybody know. We are at camp, and we're okay. (laughs) And Preacher did work all day long Monday on the van, switching out the trailer hitches and doing all that. And Brother Carter, I guess, did something Tuesday night or whatever that I don't know that he's ever done before, but he thanked all the van drivers and the mechanics and all the people that were responsible. I told my husband, I said, I don't think you've ever been honored for that before. <laughs> but it's the truth. And it is important. Every part of everything that happens and goes on. And... Um, I want to thank Brother Ken and Brother Stephen for the incredible, amazing messages that, and for the fact that we can even get to listen to them now because we get the YouTube. And then I want to thank you all too, again, for contributing and donating, Um, especially my granddaughter couldn't be here tonight because she's at her church singing, but um, she's wanted to go to Silver State for forever since her brothers used to get to go and she wasn't old enough and then when she got old enough to go their camp coincided with our camp so she went with her church and so this year she was going to get to go but um, her mother was widowed two years ago and they don't have a lot of excess finances and because of you all and your generosity my granddaughter got to go her this is going to be her senior year so it was kind of like her last you know, hurrah, getting to go. And not only that, that um, she, who is somewhat shy, got up Friday night, and you have to understand, there's like, what, 300 and some people stood up in the middle of the auditorium and gave her testimony, as did Aiden and, I know, Ethan and Aiden. It's okay, I want to call you Michael Ethan, and then you think you're in trouble. Right? (laughs) Aiden and I go back to kindergarten, right? (laughs) To watch what God's done and all of this is amazing. 
And I know that you kind of probably don't know, but this is Maggie, and this is Austin, and, and probably most of you know Sarah, but these young people, a lot of them have grown up here. It's important. It's a big deal. They come. They're not made to come. They come because they want to be here. Amen. So Kendall got up and gave her testimony, and she said, Brother Stephen's message on why, why bad things happen to good people, because I can't even tell you what all has gone on in her life since her dad died, helped me a lot. That was major, major. And you can tell, just like what Miss Darla, Miss Kate has said, she's a different, she was a different person. She, it was like a load was lifted. She looked happier than I've seen her in two years. And she was even reaching out to other people. She didn't know any of these children. She came up here like an outsider, a stranger. And now they're all trying to take her away from me. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Including Miss Melissa, trying to get her to come to Liberty and Louisville. And I'm like, but anyway, um, thank you all again, because it takes truly all of us working together. Right. It's not a solo event. and. It brings so, unity brings so much honor and glory to God. I just cannot tell you how incredible this camp was. You just, you, we can't even tell you all the things and how great it was. Amen. Amen. What? <laughs> um, I think probably the most notable thing about camp is that preacher came off the mountain and could suddenly preach all five points this morning <laughs> <laughs> instead of taking a couple, a couple days. Um, and <laughs> um, <laughs> they, they said three minute limit. Um, I have two pages front and back, um, but I can't read right now because I'm too nervous. So I had never been to a church camp before. Um, so I went up a little selfishly I was excited to get to work with the teens and hopefully be an encouragement to them. Um, but I was also excited to see what God had for me up there because I'd heard so many awesome testimonies. Um, and he had something for sure. Um, by Tuesday night, I was super convicted. Um, and I was talking to Scott um, about how I knew that God was trying to tell me something, but I was coming up with all these excuses um, how I didn't want to make a commitment because I've, I was worried that I'd break that commitment. And Scott was not very impressed with any of my excuses. <laughs> and I know that God was not impressed with any of my excuses. And so we go to um, Hillside the next morning and Brother Micah's message was on um, your heart's desire and how it was, it's pretty simple how our heart's desire should be that souls get saved. Like that's kind of like a duh. Um, <laughs> But it like, it really stood out to me because um, there are so many people who are out there trying to live right and they have the zeal, but they don't have the knowledge. Um, and they just need someone to share that knowledge with them. God just needs a willing person um, to go talk to people. Um, I was one of those people before um, Darla led me to the Lord and I got saved. And then, so I got slapped around a little bit on the hillside. And then we go to Tabernacle and Brother Park is preaching. And apparently Brother Park made a very big impression on everybody here. <laughs> he is, yeah. he's a, he's very loud. Um, and he really like kind of gets in your, you're sitting way in the back and he's like right in your face. Um, but he was preaching out of Judges. His whole week was about uh, wasted potential. But he was talking about how Samson was making he didn't take ownership for the things that he did. Um, and I was like, okay, God, because the night before, I wouldn't take ownership. I was just making all these excuses. And I was like, I wanted to run down there to the altar right then. So like, when I say I got out of that pew and I ran down, I really kind of waddled down and then like struggled to get down. But um, I, <laughs> be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> um, all week long, he was getting me because I'm trying to, this, it's like this steep going up to the tabernacle and Scott's behind me pushing me up because I'm falling backwards. But anyway, um, I surrendered my life to the Lord after that message and I, I, 
I don't know what he's going to have me do, but I'm willing and I'm excited to do it. Um, and even since we've been home, just God has been so good. Amen. Um, and Scott and I are both really excited. I, I was like, Scott, have you ever surrendered your life? And he's like, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Excuse me. I didn't know that I was behind. Um, but it was also awesome to spend so much time with the teens. Because Scott and I go out there on Wednesday nights. I'm sorry. I'm over three minutes. I know it. Um, but Scott and I go out there. Oh, Scott's the only one left. It does. Okay. Um, <laughs> so Scott and I go out there on Wednesday nights, and we get to spend time with them. Um, but this week was so much more personal, and you really got to see them come out of their shell and, like, just get so excited for God. And it was so awesome and such an encouragement to me. Um, and then in the, at nighttime, we got to go in the girls' dorm. Because Scott and I stayed in, a, in the cabin. Um, I thank you for that, by the way. Um, but <laughs> we got to go to the girls' dorm and do devotionals with them and getting to hear their hearts. Like, it was just, there's no words besides awesome. Amen. Seeing God work on the mountain. And just my prayer is that the, the excitement that everybody has coming off the mountain, we keep it until hopefully we get to go back up on the mountain. Amen. It's not like we go up to get that encouragement. We go up like ready, you know, we're still there at that same place. Um, but just thank y'all for sending us and for praying for us. Um, preacher is a terrible driver. <laughs> we were behind him. We were behind him in the girls' van coming, well, it was the, everybody's van, coming up the mountain, and he's got the trailer in two lanes going around the curves, knocking cones off the road. <laughs> yes, you were. I, <laughs> I, had to, I had to close my eyes because I was ter it was raining, and <laughs> I couldn't watch him anymore. Um, I, feel, I was like, I bet Brother Zach's stomach hurts so bad. <laughs> Looking in the rearview mirror, and cones are just popping off the road. Um, I told you revival happened on the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> he was scared for his life. I was scared for mine. Scott's behind us, and it's raining so bad, and Preacher has bad windshield wipers and won't get them changed. And <laughs> but um, <laughs> just thank you all. Okay. <laughs> You know, they're all talking about how bad it was going up to camp. I don't know what they're talking about. I just got to sit back on some cruise control and watch some movies the whole time that Miss Sharon had up. She got her little Bluetooth out. And um, I would elaborate more on that, but you know what they say, what happens in uh, Mimi's car stays in Mimi's car. So. And don't tell Preacher she thinks it's her car. Um, no, but uh, all joking aside, it was, a, uh, it was a great week at camp. This is my first year um, transitioning from a camper to a counselor, so roles were different, but the messages were still as good. Um, I don't know, it, was, it was awesome. God got to work in my heart. I got to watch it in every one of the kids, and just coming up here with the kids and um, just watching them bond together. Um, every morning, there was a little uh, little time that we had, and I would take them up to the volleyball court, and as a church, uh, by ourselves, we would just play volleyball with them. And it got to the point to where even throughout the day, I had a couple of them like, hey, can we go play volleyball? Like, can we, can we get together and go play volleyball? It was just awesome watching them mingle together um, as brothers and sisters. That was awesome. Um, I can't believe no one talked about this, but um, the main part of Brother Park's messages um, those mornings was Samson and how he went from potential to pitiful, how he was a man of God with the Nazarite vow um, to a man with his eyes gouged out, alone by himself because he was selfish. And um, he brought a man up by the name of Brother Josh. He said, can I see your wallet? And um, he took his wallet. You know, he's looking through it. The kids are laughing, having a good time watching this preacher go through a guy's wallet. And he finds the money, and he's showing the kids. And um, he takes a dollar bill out. He's like, what can you do with this dollar bill? And um, he's like, you can buy tacos with it from Taco Bell. Um, you know, you can get a drink with it and whatnot. <laughs> He then pulls out a lighter and burns it, and the kids are like freaking out that he's burning a dollar bill. Um, and you know the kids are loving it, enjoying it, and watching it. And um, he's just got—he's got the whole audience captivated at him burning money. Pulls a five out. What can you buy with a five-dollar bill? He says the four for four at Wendy's. He starts naming off a couple of other things. Burns it. Throws it in the trash. Gets to a ten. What can you buy with a ten? 
They start naming different things off. He takes it, burns it, throws it down. Pulls out a 20, and this is, this is a man's, this is not his money, this is a man's wallet. Yes. Pulls out a 20 and goes, what can you do with the 20? Kids are freaking out at this point. They're saying all these toys that they can buy, these Lego sets and everything. Takes that 20, burns it, throws it in. Pulls out a $50 bill. Says, what could you buy with this? Kids, kids are going rampant at this point. They're like, give it to us, give it to us. He's like, you want me to give it to you? And he's like, no, no, no. Burns it in front of him. And then he goes, listen, depending on what you do, your life, you can go from this potential to pitiful. Um, and it got real quiet. You could, you could, hear, um, you could hear the quietness and um, the kids ponder what just happened. Um, and that's what happened with Samson. Um, he didn't have the restraint, as Keegan said, and um, as Brother Park put it, it would have taken more strength to say no to that woman than it would have to rip those 8,000 pound um, bars and um, taking them 30, 40 something miles and setting them down on top of a hill. It would, it would have taken him more strength to say no than to do that. Um, and we had a great time up there with the kids, um, just with them illustrations, like um, for instance, Sam Sennett talks about how he ripped a lion in half as he would a, a kid, and a kid being a goat. Now, I don't know about you, but what kind of person do you know that just naturally rips a goat in half? Like, let's be honest here. Um, yeah, great point. <laughs> and it's in the Bible. It, it says that. It says he, he ripped a lion as he would rip a goat. Like, who, do, who does that? Be honest. Um, but no, it was awesome. And um, another illustration that really hit home was um, when a brother Doris um, Callie talked about it in her message, um, but there was a revolving theme around being selfish and how Samson was selfish um, and just how we need to take action for ourselves. But he was talking about um, when he was in Mexico and he was preparing a sermon and um, he got called home by his wife because their dog got under the fence chasing something, I don't remember what he said, and got all scratched up and blood was all over their yard and stuff. So he comes home and um, helps with the dog, goes back to uh, prepare his sermon, and um, one or two other things happens, but then he gets called back home again because his son had fallen and broken both um, bones in his arm. Said so whenever he lifted it up, the arm would just kind of dangle there. That's how bad it was. Um, so he goes, he's writing a sermon in the, um, in the ER. They, they've got to wait for him to get taken back. So he's in a sling right now, his son is. And uh, Brother Door has got all this going on. And his son looks at him and he says, Dad, is there anything I can do for you? And he looks at his kid that's going through all this pain. And all he's thinking about is himself. Um, you know, with the dog and with this and with that. And he's too caught up in himself to realize that there are people that care for him, even when they're in need. Um, so that was, that was a big thing right there, just a, a big thing that hit home. And it, you can see it hit home with the kids too, but uh, we get so caught up in ourselves and our own problems and our own little world, as it was said, um, that even other people in need still care for us. And even if we don't know it, they still pray for us and they're still there for us. So that was, a, that was an eye-opener and a great illustration, by the way. Dad, is there anything I can do for you? Keep in mind, this is a little kid with his arm dangling, asking his dad that. Um, so it's just a great, great illustration. Um, but no, we had a great time. We had a great write-up. Um, as Brother Zach said, no, no major accidents. And that's, that's crazy to think about over all those years that nothing major has happened going to and from camp. Um, and uh, God, God worked in my life. Um, he reassured me on some things that, um, and actions that I should be doing. Um, and it was just great to see God work in these kids' um, lives um, and everyone differently. And um, I just want to thank you all for uh, giving us the time to come up here and not only tell you about it, but um, you know, have this time to be fun and joke around with it, but also be serious. And um, thank you for letting the kids be able to go and me be able to go and help them. Uh, just thank you. Amen. Isn't God good? Miss Tammy, if you will go ahead and come on up to the piano, please. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. We sang a hymn right before the uh, teenagers got up and gave their testimonies. It's to God be the glory. 
I think it's a great song to sing right as they finish. And right after that, we're going to have a time of invitation. We're not going to sing. Uh, after this, we're not going to sing, but we're, she's going to just play the piano softly, and you can come pray for the teens and the decisions that they made. But I think first and foremost, let's praise God for what he did. So please stand with me. Turn to hymn number 204.